Hi everyone, welcome back for a new AI Academy video. In our last video, you have discovered the AI tools we have developed internally. The ones our data science team actually works with. Today, we want to take you at the heart of our expertise. In our videos, you may have seen various examples of vehicle detection on satellite imagery. This time, you are going to discover how we developed our solution and we will give you some expert advice on how to develop a vehicle detector with the best operational performances. Let's start by defining more precisely what we are going to talk about here. In this video, we are going to look at satellite images with an approximate 30 cm ground resolution. Hence, each vehicle is represented by only a few pixels in an image, which means that it may be hard sometimes, even for a human eye, to determine whether there is a vehicle or not. Despite that, the vehicle detector should be highly performing, with a detection score over 95% all over the world. Vehicles detected should be well separated in order to count them. As you can see, this is a challenging mission. To get more into details, let's define the four key metrics to evaluate our model. The precision, the number of false detection per square kilometer, the recall, and eventually the if one score. The precision, if it reaches 100%, means that all our detections are actual vehicles. Otherwise, we are detecting other objects as vehicles. The number of these false detections taken per square kilometer is another indicator to monitor. Now, the recall works in a similar way as the precision. At 100%, it means that we have got all the vehicles in the image. If the score is below that, it means that we are missing some. Finally, the F1 score is the global score to monitor and tell if the recall and precision are well balanced. Now that you know more precisely what we are talking about, let's see how to build the best vehicle detector. There are four basic steps to develop and use a deep learning model. Training dataset creation, model architecture design, training of the model on the data, and prediction. In the previous video, you discovered our AI framework, our code library for deep learning. For each of these four steps, we have implemented state-of-the-art elementary bricks and methods. You certainly remember that we have compared the conception of a deep learning model with the conception of a car. Let's keep this comparison in mind for this video as well. In the process, we select standardized deep learning bricks. We customize them. We combine them and improve each on the whole system with iterations. What if you could now get Huskub recipe to master all four development steps for vehicle detection? Let's start with the first pillar, the data. To start well, you need to have as many vehicles examples as possible. They must be as representative as possible of the diversity found in the real world, with vehicles of various types and colors, for instance. It is also preferable to have a huge diversity of contexts around the vehicles, not only roads and parkings, but also forests, deserts, fields, or even clouds. In order to go further, you may want to use data augmentations. For instance, if you only have images of parkings orientated in a certain direction, you just need to rotate or flip some of your images. You may also add some radiometric diversity by using clay or gamma transformation or even add blur on some images. And if you truly lack data, you can even use a generative adversarial network. Such a network can take one of your images and change its whole contextual aspect. For instance, add snow where there was none. One more trick. Why not incorporate a simulated vehicle in an image with the background you wish to have? With augmentations and the simulation techniques, your database can increase, get more balanced or more diverse. Keep also in mind that to reduce both time and data cost, you can optimize your training data. For instance, active learning methods enable you to decide which value added data to label and add to a data set. That's it, you have the ingredients to get an optimized and great training dataset for vehicle detection. Let's now move on to the second pillar, the architecture of your model. When it comes to finding vehicles in satellite images, there are two main families of deep learning models. 
architectures such as a retina net to detect objects, architectures to make segmentation. That is to say that classify every single pixel in the image as belonging to a vehicle or not. Considering that vehicles are very small objects on satellite images with very few features, we would advise you to use segmentation. Within the satellite images, we then determine two classes of interest, the vehicles and the background. The model could very well only learn the vehicle class, but learning the background as well might actually be helpful. Going back to segmentation, you might start with a now basic architecture for segmentation, units. That's a start for the model, but let's dig further. How many parameters should the model have? This number should be adapted to the diversity and size of the dataset. Changing the number of filters in the network will increase or decrease the number of parameters. The number of pullings operation is also to be determined with respect to what you are looking at. Keep in mind that vehicles are small objects. Once again, these are the basics, but the model can be improved with state-of-the-art methods. You could, for instance, add skip connections to be able to train a deeper network and use squeeze and excitation. Squeeze and excitation operations allow the network to know precisely where to look among the many feature maps obtained from the input image. How? By giving more weight during the training to the feature maps that are the most relevant for the vehicle class. In the end, we create the best performing deep learning architecture by using cutting edge elementary bricks. Here comes the third pillar, the training process. To train a model, we basically need to choose an optimizer, a running rate to start with, a loss, a batch size, and a few other parameters. Here are a few basic good practices that you may find useful. First off, keep in mind that there are much more pixels corresponding to the background than to the vehicles in very big satellite images. Thus, we have a problem of class imbalance. How can you overcome that? The trick is to take a weighted loss, such as a weighted cross entropy. With this loss, weights are used to penalize more the errors made on the less frequent class, vehicles. Hence, a vehicle pixel correctly classified is more rewarding than a background one. Also, when the training does not progress anymore, decreasing the learning rate will allow the network to slightly adjust its parameters. Once again, these are the other tricks, but we can do much better. You can retrain the model once its initial training is over, with another loss. This can be surprisingly efficient. We especially like to play with the jackal distance loss to have more adjusted detections. We also use other methods, such as Ensemble. With Ensemble, you can, for instance, train one model and generate several variations of it. Fat geometrical ensembling and stochastic weight averaging, for instance, may get you weights that behave slightly differently for the same architecture. At the prediction time, the different versions of the model can be used to improve the detection score. Now, you have the best methods to train a model for vehicle detection. Last but not least, the fourth pillar, prediction. Once your model has been trained properly, that is to say, you now have a great dataset, a great model design, and a great training, it's time to predict. Basically, this means that you will finally obtain the recall, the precision, a number of false detection per square kilometer, and the F1 score for your model. Once you do, you may think that you have done your best and that your metrics can't get any better. Good news, that's not entirely true. In our team, we like using some simple but super efficient tricks. Here they are. Thanks to geometrical post-processing, detections that are obviously too small to be vehicles can be removed. There, your precision just rose a bit. Also, close vehicles can be separated. And guess what? Your recall suddenly skyrockets. Finally, some more advanced advice for the predict. By using ensemble methods here as well, you can generate different value added outputs from one unique model. Test time augmentation and base and dropout are two methods we especially appreciate. With them, the recall, the precision, and thus the F1 score are reaching almost perfection. To sum up, 
To master vehicle detection on satellite images, you need to start with the basics, but only to go further, with the data, the model, the training, and the predicted output. Our AI framework is the tool that allows us to get access to advanced deep learning bricks. When combined and optimized smartly in a cutting edge system, thanks to a lot of research and especially a lot of iterations, a specific problematic such as vehicle detection on satellite imagery can be mastered. It is just like conceiving the car in itself. You now know some of our simple and more advanced tricks that have allowed us to reach very high detection score at an operational level for vehicles in satellite images. We hope the tricks and methodologies we unveil today will actually help you demystify the techniques behind vehicle detection. This is the end for today. Don't hesitate to share this video with people you believe it could help. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel not to miss the next AI Academy video. Thank you for watching.